Hey everyone, for all the years that I've been into RVing, I've also been into watching RV videos on YouTube and inevitably a lot of RV crashes. And many of the RV crashes I've seen have been seared into my brain and I think about when I'm driving. And so I've used these crashes that people have put on YouTube or other people have put on YouTube and have used them basically as learning experiences. There are times now when I see a crash where obviously I'm not going to do what that person was doing, but, but nonetheless, it's good to kind of have general reminders and sort of a brush up on how bad things can go wrong. Get that image in your head. And then hopefully with those crashes in your mind, you sort of back off a little bit. You maybe throttle back and be a little safer out there on the road. Uh, it definitely has an effect on me. So I wanted to show some of the crashes that, you know, stick in my mind a lot um some are a little more recent some have been around for a really long time most of these have been all over the internet so you've probably seen them before but i think they give great examples of sort of the top five things i wanted to focus on uh for safety the five things you should really focus on when you're driving an rv hey everyone this is just a quick reminder i really need you to subscribe to this channel i need to get to a thousand subscribers and if you're not a subscriber then you can help me by clicking subscribe i do all this for free i put it out there i've got hours of, of content out there i ask of you only one thing please click subscribe i could really use your help thanks a lot see you later everyone there are some mistakes you're going to make that aren't going to necessarily put people's lives in danger, but they're going to cost you a lot of money. And, and those are ones you want to avoid as well. They'll definitely ruin your vacation. They can also ruin your insurance rates and, and they'll obviously ruin your trailer. So uh, you want to be really careful. Uh, this is a very popular website. I'm going to put a link to all these videos uh, that I'm showing here. This is 11foot8.com, which is a, a popular YouTube channel where a gentleman set up a couple of cameras pointing at a bridge that's notorious for people crashing into it. And they even raised the bridge, you'll notice there, to 12 uh, feet 4 inches. And so now it's called 11 foot uh, 8 plus 8. Uh, but in this case, uh, people are still hitting the bridge. There's even an overhead warning light that tells you that you're oversized and you must turn. And people just keep smacking into it so here you can see it taking out multiple air conditioners on multiple rigs and then i think another you know classic this was i think it goes back to 2008 um another one this is really for fifth wheelers who run into these types of problems right but um you could really cause a lot of damage with your trailer if you bump into the wrong thing if you physically bump into a building per se in this case it's a bank atm uh um, kind of shelter over the drive through I don't know. I, I almost pulled into a gas station once. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was pulling into that gas station, I saw that uh, right before I hit the, 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 the awning that I was too tall for it. But I stopped in time. Luckily, I stopped the truck and looked out. And my truck was in just enough to get gas. But, uh, good gosh, you really need to know how tall your trailer is. And make sure that you're... Um, looking for it and this person here actually smacked it and knocked it clear down luckily there was no one in the drive-thru right there uh, in their vehicles um that that could have really been you know damn it i mean that could have been really dangerous um but yeah i mean you have to know the size of your rig and you have to know the, how wide it is how tall it is and account for it or your tail swing right if you have a fifth wheel with a uh, or a trailer with a really long uh if you have a really long trailer, you really got to watch out for the tail swing. Now, these were just ones that cost money, but the rest of these, you know, the, these could, could cause the loss of life. And that's why it's important that we focus on these. One area to focus on is not driving when you're drowsy or distracted or sleepy. That seems obvious when you say it, but it goes on a lot. And when you're RVing, you're often pushing the miles. So you've got to know when to cut it off and when to stop, when to pull over. In this case, this driver was obviously drowsy to some degree, starts veering off the road. And luckily, the truck saw him, got off the road, and nobody here was killed. But that could have easily been a head-on um you know collision uh, something i wouldn't show here on this channel uh but uh yeah this is another great example of you know f figure out where your line is and and don't cross it uh some people like to stop at 3 p.m other people uh, just wait until they're tired uh, that's kind of how i do it but i know that once i've started yawning a couple of times that's my indication it's time to pull over and stop 
This is one that I've seen for years. This one I thought about a lot in previous uh, retrips when I've been driving in the wind, not really being able to quite tell where's the tipping point, no pun intended. Uh, where Where is it where the wind is going to tip you over? Uh, I have, in this most recent trips, even talked about driving some pretty strong winds. If you're driving in the west, you're going to end up driving in winds. And you can see here, if I saw this, this much um, sway in my mirrors of my trailer, I'd pretty much stop. But you can also notice in this video that they're not driving very fast speed is not an issue here this is simply a broadside wind problem and even when you're driving in this construction area at a fairly low a speed you can still just be flipped right over by the wind um, so when you're driving, if you start seeing other RVers pulling off at the gas stations because it's too windy, uh, you see trucks pulling off, you want to stop as well. Don't be the last person on the road in a windy situation. I've pushed it kind of far, I, um, but I, luckily I never pushed it this far. So yeah, here's another one where the person, uh, you know, is just driving in the wind. At least the previous video had a you know one ton truck towing it and that didn't even stop it from 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 flipping over. But here, obviously, the trailer flipped the vehicle because the vehicle was lighter than the trailer. Something you want to be aware of when your tow vehicle is functionally lighter than your your trailer. Um, it's going to be the tail that wags the dog. I thought about this video a lot when I was traveling recently in the mountains this winter. Um, I was going through some snow and some hail with the trailer, and I kept thinking about this, this gentleman sliding out of control. Um, if you look at this video, you realize that he drives past a sign that says uh, the, the curve is at 40 miles an hour, the yellow sign. Now, that's a warning generally to trucks and trailers and RVers that this is how you should be taking this corner on a normal driving condition day these are clearly not normal driving conditions so for myself if i saw that sign that said 40 uh, 40 miles an hour as a limit for this turn i would back off as quick as i could really you can see he does start hitting his brakes there but he's already doing 40 miles an hour you can see in the dash cam of the person following them uh, that they're basically doing 40 miles an hour. They really should have been doing maybe 30, 35 through here, in my opinion. If they were doing 30, 35, they probably wouldn't have broken loose. They also wouldn't have been braking so hard on the turn. They were still braking when they hit the turn and they should have slowed down to the speed they wanted to get down to for the turn before they ever hit the turn. This is because they're driving in snow and ice. If this was driving on a normal you know, dry summer day, I would expect you could probably even hit that corner at 45 with a standard RV trailer setup. But I definitely would recommend you look at those yellow signs, use them as a general guideline as your maximum speed in dry, good weather. And if you're in any kind of uh, wetter or snowy uh, weather, then you want to bring it down even further, right? Th this is obvious. Of course, trailer sway is a big problem and something that really needs to be considered. Um, trailer sway is a specific kind of dynamic that happens usually with pull trailers, less so with fifth wheels, where effectively you start getting an oscillation going with the trailer. It's technically, I believe, when the trailer is uh, trying to go a little faster than the tow vehicle. And that's why when you do have trailer sway where it starts to oscillate, you want to put just a slight amount of trailer brake on. You don't want to hit your, your vehicle brakes. You want to just hit your trailer brake a little bit. Um, in this case, of course, they just let the sway get out of control and after a handful of oscillations generally the the rv will flip and in many times the the vehicle itself will flip depending on the size of the vehicle relative to the trailer so um this is called trailer sway i'll put a link to this particular video where they go through and talk about the effects of trailer sway often it has to do with how the weight is distributed inside your trailer in other words if you put a whole bunch of weight in the back of your trailer or get your nose uh, uh a weight to be too light you can create sway very easily um they, again they demonstrate that well in this video also the size difference between your tow vehicle and your trailer greatly matter the, if your tow vehicle is larger than your trailer or heavier than your trailer then it's likely going to control the situation however if your trailer is heavier than your tow vehicle again like i said before the tail will wag the dog so uh, that's why i try to keep my trailer and tow vehicle either matched or have my tow vehicle be a little heavier than my trailer 
So to recap, you know, one of the five things you really should be focused on here is don't drive too fast. Make sure that you watch your load and how it's distributed and how your trailer is mounted so you can avoid trailer sway. You don't want to drive in the wind. If it starts to be too windy, pull over. This is why you have a trailer. You can go in, chill on your couch, watch some TV, wait for the wind to die down. Watch the height. The fourth is watch the height. Watch the size of your rig. Make sure that you're going to clear any overhangs that you're going underneath. And of course, make sure if you have a long trailer that your uh, tail sway when you're taking turns isn't going to smack a vehicle uh, on the other side of you. And finally, most importantly, stay alert. Don't drive when you're tired. Don't drive when you're too distracted. If you're in an emotional situation, uh, it's not a good time to drive an RV. Uh, if you're on any kind of medications that could impair driving, then don't tow your trailer. And of course, don't drink or drive or, or drive while you're on drugs. That's just, I would think goes without saying, but apparently not. Um, so don't, uh, don't drive unless you're fully attentive and ready to drive at the top of your game. Driving a 10 to 20,000 pound articulating rig down the road while you're impaired is just about the worst idea you could come up with. Be safe out there, everyone.